Okay, we are now uh, doing a preparation for the Integral European Conference, which will be online this year, 2020. And our topic is looking at the pandemic through the lens of the spiral. And the guests are here, Lorraine Laubsche from South Africa and John Freeman from the UK. And I'm Heidi Hörnlein. I have founded the uh, Wisdom Factory, where I love to interview people about their topics. And actually, integral and spiral dynamics was also my topic for a long time. I did a course with Don Beck in 2004 in Berlin. Also, I was not really good in understanding text and um, uh, dialect, but something I got out of that. So um, I think it's a very good tool to see how things develop in the world or how people are acting and behaving in the world. And so I invited Lorraine, who I met last year in the conference in Africa, in, in Johannesburg. And it was so great that I invited her to other uh, episodes in the Wisdom Factory. We did one on conscious aging and we did one about your role in ending apartheid as a collaborator with uh, Don Beck. And with John Freeman, we did two or three conversations from right from the beginning of the Wisdom Factory, I think in 2014, about the possibility, the science of possibility, and also about um, how money get broken. Oh, I didn't, I didn't write it down. I should have written the t title of your, of your book. It was about uh, the economy and the new ways of economy. So I thought you would be the perfect couple to talk about what is going on now in the times of pandemic. And for who doesn't know you, I want to read a little bit about you. First about John, he says that he is a radical thinker leading the mind shift into the second tier world. He is one of the world's leading trainers in spiral dynamics. Is a consultant in organizational development and the creator of personal development products. John's book, The Science of Possibility, that I had remembered, is a groundbreaking exploration of the new reality and reinventing capitalism. That was the one I was looking for. The only full four quadrant approach to money. His new trainings in intuition and creating your reality, your reality can be explored through the Facebook access to possibility group. That's you, John. You can add afterwards whatever you want to add. And now I read about you, Lorraine. Lorraine is one of the most experienced users of spiral dynamics globally. She is renowned for her ability to apply spiral dynamics practically and with lasting results. Now I added something to your uh, bio. <laughs> I wrote, Lorraine wrote her PhD with 83 the result of her lifelong experience with working with spiral dynamics and of her collaboration with Don Beck in South Africa, the country with which she is intimately familiar. Her easy and accessible communication style enables her to share sound and practical problem solving, thinking and conflict resolution skills with employees at all levels in the organization. Her research interests include include effective workplace forms, diversity management, personal and organizational change. And Lorraine has presented papers at conferences in North and South America, as well as South Africa. And now we have you finally also in the European conference, which otherwise, if it wasn't online, you couldn't have attended. And so I'm really glad that we have you here. So first of all, I would like to ask you, um, do you want to add something to your bio, what I read about you? John, you won't? It's okay? Lorraine? There's plenty. Thank <laughs> There's you. Plenty. Okay, thank you. Yes. Lorraine, is it okay? I wanted to ask John a question. Okay. Because I was interested in that part about capitalism. And I wondered if you'd listen to uh, Zakaria's presentation today or on his website 
of what he was presenting a book that's just been written that says it's not quite uh, capitalism, but more where one is in the world. It's uh, a clash between the haves and the have-nots. And I'd love to get, uh, he was just too quick for me to write it down. I'll try and catch him. They repeat it tonight. I will sit there with a paper and pencil and write it down. But I'm uh, just telling you, I don't know if you know Zakaria. He has a CNN program on a Sunday. And yeah, he's got I'm, a <clears throat> CNN website. Yeah, I'm familiar with his name, but I don't, I don't know his work well. But of course, the the gap between the haves and the haves nots is has been getting bigger and bigger for uh, many years, and it's one of the one of the symptoms of uh, the, the way that the system is broken. Yeah, I mean, ju just I, I mean, we've got plenty of other things to talk about, so I won't go into detail. <laughs> but just to say that the the strap line to reinventing capitalism is how we broke money and how we fix it. And so the notion that we broke money and the fact that inequality is a big uh, yeah. indicator of that, um, that, that, is, uh, that makes you total might, sense to me. You might actually have come across the book and read it, uh, but it's a question of, you, uh, a lot of the things you're talking about it that you talked about the other day were applicable when I was listening to this little snatch in between. And I thought of you and I thought, I must ask you. Okay. But that's, that's beside the point. That's now a little conversation on the side. I shall, I shall have to catch up on that one. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's go to the... <laughs> So the t topic which we have, we want to look at the pandemic, which is all over the world. I, I saw 188 countries uh, affected. I mean, almost every, every country of the world. And how do our leaders handle this uh, pandemic? And we have some examples and you were in the pre-talk talking about um, UK and America and how you can see where these people are at and what value systems they have because we are talking about spiral dynamics and who doesn't know what that is i hope uh, that gets clear during this conversation otherwise we can post a link to some explanation john has done several uh, videos to explain spiral dynamics and um, then people can catch up if they don't get it but i think they will so I, I think they will. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about that. How do leaders, where are leaders at? How is their behavior uh, according to their level of development, to their yeah, place in the spiral? Well, you've been mapping this out, Lorraine, so why don't you go first? <laughs> well, as I said, if Trump I see is red, and Johnson is also red, but with a touch of blue. And I think having his lady just had a baby, it's going to do a lot more to his blue. Hopefully it will improve his blue so that he does something about what's happening in Britain. Because I've got friends in Scotland and they're standing up and screaming about him all over the place. So one looks at, then I have to tell you that they also are of a different value system. And it's interesting to see how different value systems look at this, depending, it tells you about them more than it tells you about what they're saying. It tells you what they're thinking, because it is a thinking system. And I have found that when I try to put it over to people who don't think, I might as well stay at home because <laughs> that's now, you know, the saying of pearls before swine, so it's better to just go away. We've got to look also at 
Russia at Putin, what's his value system? His value system is blue. High blue, a lot of blue. Uh, his, the orange is not as much to me there. He does it in blue, he wants to possess. Uh, blue wants to be in charge, he wants to be in charge. Uh, I think he's put enough away that he can sit on his money bags for the rest of his life, but he wants authority. And authority goes with hard blue to me. So what you see, when you see that hard blue that you have seen it, it, and we must remember at this point that all the value systems have positive and negative in them. And sometimes I have arguments with Don to say, wait a minute, there are, there's positive and negative. Give me the positives and when I do workshops, I do the positives of the system and the negatives of the system. And so you can pick out, so there is, it's not everybody is negative and everybody is positive. So that makes a big change to a lot of things. Because if people are positive, you can organize change. But if they're negative, you're just wasting your time and your breath and your thoughts and everything else. You have to come, can find something else to do with it. Okay. I see you put something up, uh, Heidi. I just wanted to show a little bit of the value systems, uh, the colors, because we are talking about colors and if people are not um, familiar no, with aerodynamics and the colors, they don't um, realize it. But I noticed that this, uh, the writings is in German, so I better find the uh, <laughs> English one. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think one thing to, to make sure we've drawn attention to because this is an integral conference is that those who've come to the colors through the integral model won't be familiar with blue as a color. They'll be familiar with amber as the label for that stage. Um, so, you know, if uh, I'm going to assume that as an integral conference, everybody at least has that level of understanding of knowing what the integral colors are. So that when we talk about blue, we're talking about what is, uh, what is called amber in that system. And when we come to talk about yellow, as we uh, will, um, that we're talking about what is called teal in the Wilbur system. Okay. That's very good that you keep that uh, on track, uh, John, because uh, Lorraine is very much grounded in, in the colors of Don Beck, I'm, I'm quite sure. So if you can... Yes, and my work has been at the bottom of the spiral. My work has been with you know, the children and the dying, the starting and the leaving, and it's been with the African beige, African purple, African blue, African red, which was Zuma. We've gone through Zuma, it was the African red, very much like Trump did, as much damage as Trump did. Where Cyril, who I've worked with for years, has uh, He's got a much heavier blue, always has had. But, and because he could control red, that's how he became leader of the Mind Workers Union, because he could control that red that was there. So you see that, you see it, if you'll see it in, uh, what's her name that leads Germany at the moment. Angela Merkel. Yeah. Angela Merkel. I see a lovely high blue in her, in her body language, in the way she carries herself. To me, it's all what I understand blue is. It's beautiful. It is what it is. Uh, 
I have a bit of difficulty, if you need to know it, with teal. And perhaps you must exclude me out of this because... Just talk about yellow. Pardon? If you just talk about yellow. Yes. Well, yellow, but of course, you see it's a system and so it's a system that appears to reincarnate. And um, I'm playing with the idea and understand the word playing. I think this way and I think that way and I listen to people that uh, perhaps we come back with a bit more understanding and therefore that might be but you have to have transitions in some ways. And we don't always know what each and individual's transition has been. And to get a tea, I'm quite sure you have to go through a transition of one sort or another. Mm -hmm. But coming back to well, the leaders uh, in, in the world, I don't think we have anybody in teal or yellow at the moment. And I would like to ask you, how do these leaders, you were talking about, um, t deal with the, with the Corona crisis? How, what do you think is, a, is a, a better way of doing? What do you think is a worse way of doing? And does it depend on the colors, on the levels of development? It definitely does. Mm -hmm. um, the, the one person that I would identify as very clearly uh, operating from yellow, and she's not that well known, uh, is Jacinta Ardern in New Zealand. New Zealand. And if people were to look at the proposals that she and her, uh, her finance man have just released about the way in which they see New Zealand coming out of the lockdown, they've produced proposals which have have a sense of how to rebuild a country with a, a real respect of all of the different layers uh, rebuilding it on the basis of of giving people uh, jobs and new training rather than what we're seeing uh, what we see in the uk is here's a money avalanche let's print loads of money and throw that at the problem but we don't actually have any real solutions uh, what's happening in in america has a has a little bit of of that it has some throwing money at the companies but not not giving anything useful to the people so that you know there are some really strong differences according to the level of uh thinking that is present i mean we've talked about the leaders um and, and I don't dis I don't dispute uh, the the label given to Johnson or to Trump as, as red. I mean, Trump is uh, a, a kind of three year old in an adult skin. But there are, of course, people around them, and the economic policies that have been brought out are very much conceived from the orange system where it only sees the, the material aspects, it only sees the money. It doesn't truly see the people, it doesn't see the blue layer, it doesn't see the purple layer. And um, it's, uh, well, it, it, there's a little bit of a nod to green. Oh, okay, we need to care about people. And they'll use the language of caring about people. In the UK, they use the language of caring out about people. Trump can't even be bothered with that. John? Just in what you've been saying, that, wow, sorry, the brain is not as young as it used to be, but you don't, what you got in New Zealand, I quite agree with what you said there. I have children in New Zealand and in Australia and in America, so I've got an insight to a lot of things like that. And, but what you were talking about is in, when you spoke of that, there's a lack of spirituality because that only comes in, well, to me, in it's part of that green and it's part of yellow. 
the spirituality that is, uh, and I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about spirituality. And you will find people that have had out-of-body experiences. I play with that a lot because when I say, when I tell people that I've done astral traveling, they want to say, what's that? You know, did you go on a new kind of airplane? <laughs> <laughs> so yes. it's very different, but it, it tells you where they are. It doesn't tell anybody where you are. Yes, I mean, of course, I, I wouldn't expect politicians, uh, even advanced thinking politicians, maybe like Jacinda Ardern, I wouldn't expect them, even if they have a strong spiritual under, underpinning, I wouldn't necessarily expect them to talk about that. So, you know, I, it's quite possible that some of that is, is there. I also think it is possible to be functionally uh, working with the yellow system in the sense of the, the viewpoint that yellow can take that understands the existence of all the previous stages and understands how to integrate them in a functional way. Yeah. And uh, th that to me is, is um, th there's a huge amount of benefit that can come with yellow, even if people don't have uh, a spiritual perspective. And of course, to get to yellow, you may not have to have a kind of big spiritual uh, picture or, you know, the kinds of experiences you're talking about. But you do have to have gone through green and you have to have a feeling for the human spirit in my yeah. book. And you have to have sacrificed something personally, I think, because you're not going to get there without that giving of yourself. Yes. So that is something that we don't often talk about. But I took what I could from the spiral, from Claire and from Don and from Chris. And I truly feel that uh, what I did was I took that purple and red and I had to work with it. That was what was in front of me. This was the reason. And with the transition happening with Mandela and that transition was highlighted the, uh, the value systems. Don himself saw certain things, but he wasn't, he hadn't lived with it like we'd lived through it. He hadn't lived through Soweto riots. He hadn't gone through uh, into the townships when we weren't allowed to go to the townships. You had to stand up for what you believed. So he hadn't had the opportunity to do that. I wouldn't have allowed him. The closest he came to it was when we were tear gassed at the airport, when they just broken down the main doors of the airport when it was still young smuts the, they brought this cusper in and broke it all down and everybody was tear gas and don was happy so he now experienced tear gassing as well <laughs> oh that's something i really look forward to too um <laughs> But yes, it's, it, it's important. It's important that those those things are are, are real things. and embodied. Don loves red music. There's a part of Don that's mm. very red. He loves Absolutely. red music, and he loves red clothes. Watch the boots all the time. The Texas boots and the 
Texas always takes, if you've been on one of his courses, you normally get taken to the stockyards to go and see what happens at the stockyards. I don't know if you ever went. Can we go I, back I, to, the, to <laughs> the topic a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let, let's do that. I mean, I, no, I never went. I, I didn't ever do my courses with Don in Texas. I only did them. Uh, I only did them in Boulder, and there aren't many stockyards in Boulder. Um, <laughs> so my experience was different. But I, I, I think yes. Let's go. If we go back to the to the pandemic and the reasons for it, I think I'd like to pick up on this thread of uh, or on two threads. One is there, there are two levels in my perception, two levels of awakening that are being brought forward by the pandemic. And one uh, is that because most Western humans have been brought up and schooled so strongly uh, in, in the thinking, in, a, in the mindsets that are from blue and orange and if they're lucky green there's a real strong emphasis on cognitive problem solving and there's a really complete absence in most of western culture and this in, i i think this is present in the spiral dynamics community and in the integral community too is a lack of uh, understanding of how deeply the beige and the purple and the red systems sit within us and how important they are to any solutions that we're going to bring forward in order for those to be truly second tier or integral because there is so much that is instinctual and there's so much to do with the way that we respond uh, emotionally to events. So one of the things I know that you're very aware of, uh, Lorraine, is the, the depth of purple and how deeply in this particular scenario, how deeply purple and our attitude to death as a, as a culture sits as a kind of blind spot because orange and all our technological systems have built a mindset where we've imagined that we were going to control the world. We were going to dominate nature. We were going to be in charge of that. And we, kind of, we can push death as something, firstly, as, as something which is completely kind of undesirable and unintegratable into our way of being but we can also push it to the edges of our reality. So one of the things that is happening with the pandemic is it is forcing us as a human collective to come back to the reality of what it is to really to, to live and to die. And that sits within another layer of awareness that I want to pr bring present into the conversation which is about the human level of separation that has particularly come about with the orange system that has taken people very much into an eye oriented mentality I mean we've we've if if there's a center point for our society we've moved it to kind of i don't know let's be generous let's say it's 25 percent we and 75 percent i and there's the big picture of death and dying which comes alongside that in the notion that we are we've been living with ever since um ever since Hiroshima for the for the last 60 years humanity has lived in a space around death where there's an underlying awareness that we have the capacity to destroy ourselves as a species and that's been coming back lately of course with the climate change agenda so 
our ability to come together to solve problems like climate change, like economic inequality, like ecological damage, that has, that has not been adequately in the frame because there is too much overall in our systems which is I oriented. And the, if, if there's a spiritual lesson, well, I think there is a spiritual lesson in the, the, um, in the planetary creation of this pandemic. The lesson is we have to come together to solve problems. And a lot of people are experiencing that. Certainly in the UK, the narrative that is around we're going to do this together is something that hasn't been seen in the UK I would say probably for the for since the last the fifty years. Mm -hmm. Since the war. Yeah, since the war or the, the, the post war period when everybody was in, in this country anyway was still in kind of um, yeah. rationing and yeah. I've often seen now this is completely off the record and it's got it's not for the for the symposium or whatever it's going to be called. I've often asked myself, where does the split come? And I see the split coming at orange, not at yellow. Because to really be in green is what we need to be. You might be describing it as teal, but to be green means you have to, uh, it's less of me, it's put away of me. It's a repeat of the blue at a higher level of complexity. Yes, I mean, if you're, uh, I, I certainly accept what you're saying about uh, about green in that sense. I, I, I can see why you would say that the, the shift towards second tier starts to come after orange, because it's orange which creates the huge complexity and the, uh, the world which is sometimes described as the VUCA world, volatile and uncertain and complex and ambiguous. Yeah. I think green is a kind of, I think it's a sort of transitional stage. I, I, I'm still inclined to go with where Graves put the division because the mindset that the solutions come from, I think doesn't come until other, the other side of the green yellow boundary. Because it's only as we start to embrace the, uh, the, the ability that yellow has to think systemically, the ability yellow has to uh, embrace paradox and the fact that you can have two seemingly incompatible ends of a, of a polarity that actually we have to be able to integrate. And so to me, the solution, uh, the solutions begin to arise in with the yellow mindset because the yellow mindset is capable of the degree of integration and the degree of management of complexity. But that's still a big change because it has to step out of the linear thinking that is so heavily trained in orange that everything is cause and effect. And you can't deal with a complex world from cause and effect. You have to be able to shift into a mindset which is much more like you're surfing a wave and you're making your decisions continually and you're altering your balance uh, on the surfboard all the time because conditions are changing. So there are no right answers, there are no wrong answers, there are just the answers that keep us on the board for today. It's just for today. Mm -hmm. And you see, I've always seen that as, uh, that as green. Uh, at least I've seen the yellow as beige. And I always saw the teal as purple to the power of two. Was okay, you're using teal as, as turquoise. Yellow was beige to the power of two. That's what yes. teal did. Yes. 
And he was looking at the same lines as you are looking. Uh, you know, what I've read and what I've spoken. And he was too advanced for his time here, for the brains that were around him. Yes. And we're lucky to have what he, Heidi wants to talk to us. Sorry, yes. Heidi. Yes, I would like at this point to invite our guests to ask some questions. <laughs> because in the conference, we will have several people uh, here and... I think it would be nice to invite them in some way uh, to, to contribute. And so, Monia, if you want to ask them a question, you can direct it to both of them or to one of them and whatever you want to ask. And coming back to the pandemic in the, from the lens of the spiral. Um, one of the questions I have is, um, you mentioned Hiroshima, and uh, what came to my mind was the deconstruction of the World Trade Center and Don Beck's reaction to it. And at that time, he sort of slid back on the spiral, as many Americans did. And so uh, what I'm wondering is, uh, how can this pandemic be handled? Uh, by not sliding back on the spiral, but by developing. Whoever, I... I... Good question, good question, because so I'm noticing question. going back, you know. <laughs> yes, you want to say something, Lorraine? This is what I was listening to this afternoon, and so I completely agree with. If we go back to the last pandemic, if we go back to what Roosevelt did. This man is saying that why don't we just keep the people that do real work, the people that make roads, that do uh, build buildings and fix things and keep them and give them skills and teach them to do things. That's what Roosevelt did. He took those people and trained up. We've got too many totally untrained people. What do we train people for for the last 20 years? Nobody's been trained to use the, their body. You go to the gym for that. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I, think that's, I think that's absolutely right. And I think it, it, it kind of goes back to what I said about Jacinda Ardern, because the, the, the the response that they're having. I think what you're describing is, yes, this is, this is the kind of response that's needed that will come out of, or that needs to come out of the pandemic. M my feeling about the question you've asked, Monia, is not to be too critical of the downshift, because when you look at the stages, really, um, nationalism or a sense of national identity is about the the most powerful system that is available to humanity en masse as a means of bringing people together it's very easy for those who might be you know sitting in an, an integral conference who have such an awareness of yellow and of, sorry of green and who have such an understanding of the world as a as a whole system and are seeing all of that to imagine that people can be brought together under the banner of common humanity and that's not actually available to the majority of the world i mean as i as i've heard you say lorraine in in the past you know, the majority of people, the majority of the human population is living in somewhere along the purple, red, blue span of systems. And that's not sufficient to bring people together in the response to a crisis. So we have to get through that. The question is, do, will we have leaders who can take us beyond that? And that to me is the answer to your question, Monia. That's why I look again at Germany. I mean, they were in a bad way at the end of the war. Being old enough to have remembered all that stuff, that Merkel 
has done so much for that country, but she's now also facing these ones at the bottom that are, as we say in Afrikaans, boiling. You know, they're boiling and they, uh, they want everything, but they, and they want it now, not tomorrow, now, instant gratification, which of course we know is the bottom line for bread. That's what they want. If we can, if the pandemic can get bad enough to put them into purple, which a lot of the states in America that I'm watching and those people standing on the street and protesting, you've seen the protesting in the Johannesburg streets, you've seen protesting everywhere from purple, it learned something from the ANC. You must shout and you must throw things. And now, how are we going to calm that down so that we get to the point with, if you want a job, it's not a nine to five, it's from sun up to sundown. Because purple works according to sun time. They only work in summer from when the sun comes up till when it goes down. And in winter, they sleep later and they only start working when the sun comes up. <laughs> you can go anywhere in Africa and test that, you'll find it is so. That's purple. Yes. Just a little silly thing in between because we but must. What, yeah. <laughs> what you are saying is to. to, to that we need to, to be back with nature in many ways, you know, instead of having our systems of living somewhere in the clouds or in these flats, which are uh, closed and uh, you don't even see what weather is outside, you know, we are so uh, alienated from what is really going on in nature. I mean, I'm not, I'm living, I'm doing that, what you say, I sleep a lot in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> Not so much in summer. Uh, that's when you are close to nature, it's, it's a, a different way. And when we talk about uh, what you talked before, John, about the climate uh, problem and so, I think it's mainly because people have no feel for nature. They, they you know, they, they find it nice beautiful there are flowers haha <laughs> nice but it's not what nature really is the power of nature and the laws of nature i had to learn that in my 30 years on the countryside you know and i had this all the same ideas of oh, beautiful nature it's not it's very powerful and uh it's not what you think that it is and the more you are distant of of, of that the the less you can really even be helpful for changing climate, uh, I mean, for, for changing the ideas what we need to do. Because I even, I have people here for a year, they lived here, they were not interested in gardens or something. They could have learned something about nature, but they didn't, you know. When uh -huh. city people are so far away from what life really is, so that I'm not wondering why things have gone as they go, as they went. And for me, this sort of crisis we are now in is bringing people back to think about life and what life might be, you know, uh, <laughs> if we hadn't filled it up with all sorts of artificial things, you know. Yes, well, everything I'm looking at and seeing and bits and pieces I'm reading is that like giving people vegetables. But nobody's saying they all come in boxes or plastic bags. And nobody's explaining that if you don't look to the climate, you're not going to have any more vegetables. And the thought of not having it hasn't entered their minds yet because it's like the Sutu word for is it, papata. You do that and you hold your hands. And that is a sort of begging. You, they use different words in India, but you see pictures all over the world. And the most terrible thing that I saw today was that all these countries, Singapore, uh, Dubai, all these fancy places, operate on, uh, I call it slave labor. 
because and they, there's thousands and thousands of these people being sent back to their countries where there's nothing in any case. The one lady was her son. She sleeps on the floor somewhere in somebody's house. She's been with them 16 years. They're sending her back to where she came from. She's a servant. And that is that that you're talking about, the capitalism that is, it uses people. It doesn't help people. It just uses them. It doesn't put anything back in. It's a very selfish, hungry system. Finished. <laughs> yes, I mean, I, I, I want... I would like to just make the distinction between capitalism as a notion and what we see in the way capitalism is now and the orange system as a mindset. Because you, one of the reasons I, uh, and this is relevant to the pandemic, even if it doesn't sound like it, one of the reasons that I called my book about money reinventing capitalism is that if you ran the system with a different mindset, you would get a different outcome. Yeah. And so it's, it's quite important to recognize that we have the potential to rebuild the, f the way the work world works functionally, including the way that we use money functionally. And actually my perception is that if you look three, six, 12 months down the road, what is going to come kind of, um, I don't know, if, if, like, like, the, like the cart behind the horse. If the, pan, if the pandemic is the horse, the cart that is gonna come behind it is uh, the breakdown of our money systems because they, the pressures that we're going to impose on them uh, are pushing an already fragile system to the point where things will collapse. And a lot but of people it, will, will, will suffer from that collapse. You know, yeah. you're talking about 100 years ago and, and Roosevelt. This is another, uh, another aspect of the way that we are going to repeat um, you know, the, the Dust Bowl in, in American terms. Yes, or, yeah. You've got the climate and you've got... You know, if you just look at that, and sometimes I use that because it's it, people that are not aware of anything, it starts to make them, oh, wait a minute, stop and think of it. There are some people, uh, I don't talk to many people. I only talk to people that will understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> because as you know, I stay here and... Talking like that is, but here you just get, um, that's why I'm seeing the elderly, how their systems shut down. There's no, there's no jumping ahead at all. And I remember Claire and how uh, to keep up with him where he was and where I was at that stage was a big battle and try and understand this great big idea that he was putting in front of us. And I still think it's a wonderful system and it was my job to take it and to experiment with it at a very low level. And I want you all to remember the term value engineering because that is the terminology that Keith van Heerden used and I use to implement the value systems. Yeah, I, I mean, to, it, this all to me comes together because um, Your, 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 uh, I, I recognize the description, um, even though I talk to different people than, than, than you do, the, the fact that there's 
a lot of people who don't understand the conversation that we're having here. But to me, what's important in talking to an audience of um, the kind of people who turn up to an integral conference is we're the people who are supposed to understand this kind of thing. And we're the people, if we are not the ones who are going to be, be putting out into the world, this is what now has to be done that is different than has ever been done before, if we're not the people who are doing it, then who the hell is? Because th it's inevitable. I mean, you know, you, you know that one of Claire Gray's fun fundamentals was, damn it, all people have a right to be who they are. We can't take people who live from a purple value system or a blue value system and expect them to live from anything else. The challenge is to, is to reorient the systems and deliver what those people need in order for them to lead healthy lives where they are. And so it's, the, it's what you're saying about values engineering. I mean, that's, that's as good a label on it as, as any from my point, point of view. It is about building systems with values that support people to live in healthy ways and that make it possible for them to do that. Mm. Yeah, so I would come back to our guests, uh, in this case, one guest, Monia, and uh, wondering if she uh, wants to ask some more questions, because I think it is living ab about the questions this uh, Yeah, uh, I'm not sure that there's a question, but when I was listening to you, uh, I had a feeling that solidarity, which is a political phrase from the left, is becoming a spiritual, has to become a spiritual attitude. What would you say about that? What I would, I would say is, is that... Let, is me, the, let, me, let me add something. Okay. Uh, is solidarity something which we still have in purple? I think this is the 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 challenge of it is that yes solidarity can have different meanings at different stages and so I yes you can have it at you purple what, if you and, had time I'll go through each one and tell you what it is in each system why don't you do that and then I'll I'll, I'll pick up and mm -hmm. say what's in my mind okay solidarity in purple is uh Just food and water and sharing what you've got, a little bit that you've got with the person next to you. It's very basic. Solidarity. In purple, it's a question of standing together again and believing in things. So it has a belief, a combined belief system which believes in the, the Molozi, the, the spirits of the ancestors, which you also find in the American tribes. You find in all tribes. That's why it's very tribal. And you will see that come up in a different way in the future, but I'll talk another time about that. Uh, in, the, in the red, Solidarity means you come and stand with us in the, and bring your flags and come with and let us make things. Let's get the system going. We want this, we want that, we want the next thing. The strike. At any level, the strike is a red solidarity. At blue, the solidarity is towards an idea. In orange, the solidarity is, that's where it starts to divide because the ones that have got enough start to put it away so you can't get it. And the ones that haven't got want it more. So it comes to your sister. Your green solidarity starts to be, I've got a crust of bread, I'll share it with you from a humane point of view. Yellow, 
says, look, if we get you people to sit down, slap, 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 sit down, if you all give a little bit, come on, then we'll have enough. Put your little piece on the table and then we'll have enough. You've got to put it in a bit finer language than that. I'm sure you'll be able to do that, John. Okay. Heidi, back to you. <laughs> Well, if I could just pick up, I mean, I, I, I think that's a very neat uh, set of expl uh, explanations. And so for me, the issue of solidarity and the solidarity we need now is that most of the ways that people perceive solidarity are rooted in, I, I would say, all of those, the, all of the purple, red and blue systems well, and the way that Lorraine has just described orange is that solidarity comes from being us against them. Yes. So solidarity requires a sense of otherness. And we can't afford to do that now. Solidarity has to come from the green and above, where solidarity is about all of us. Yeah. So solidarity is a very tricky word to use. Okay, we're in blue, uh, purple and blue. You must remember those are the, are the quiet systems. They're the ones that, how should I say, they would talk about it and things. The others are the hot systems, the red, the orange, the yellow. So yellow will, the green, the green will try and persuade people. What I'm seeing at the moment is that the orange advertising agencies are saying, uh, donate to this. And wherever you look, every country, people are donating. Now that's a bit of green starting to come out. Makes some orange people feel very nice. Because <laughs> <laughs> a bit of green there. <laughs> Whereas the, the yellow, the yellow has to be able to get and say, that's all there is. We now have to use it for all of us. It's the sharing again. Me finished. <laughs> yeah, thank you. My that's really nice. streaming. Come on, Heidi, tell us what we're doing wrong. No, it's fine. I'm I'm enjoying the 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 conversation, and in in the case of the conference, we surely would have more questions, and so I would invite Moniati to ask some other question, or I can think of other questions. But uh, I know Monia is very good in in uh, formulating questions, so I leave it to you. Uh, well, my last question wasn't quite answered, so because you sort of solidarity is uh, yeah it's a political statement to to some extent in our minds uh, but what i meant is that there is what is needed right now is a spiritual influx into this uh, opinion in this word or just a change of this word to but how can you talk to political leaders about spirituality? You don't, you can't. You have got to identify what spirituality is. Is it Hindu spiritualism? Islamic spiritualism? Christian spiritualism? Uh, just spiritualism? What I'm hearing, what Monia is saying, is uh, the component of the heart is missing. How can we uh, uh, put the coming from a heart space in the necessary decisions? Is it that, Monia? What you it can also come from a mind space. It's not bad to have a mind. Yeah, but uh, also the heart, maybe the whole yeah, yeah. thing. But you know, uh, it would be a good thing. Well, we have in Austria, we have a very young chancellor uh, who is uh, obviously schooled in some ways uh, he doesn't talk about because some of his uh, what he puts down I find in uh, many of the spiritual books so 
you can only sneak it in from behind. You can't uh, tell it people uh, front, in the front, 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 forward. You can't. Uh, and <laughs> the funny thing is people now say that he already has the aura of a messiah which is of course terrible because then he will be crucified. Uh, but um, he, is, uh, he was very much ahead of most of the developments. And so we are rather lucky up to now. But uh, in Austria now, today we had many, many new infections because people, um, they use the word eigenverantwortung, you are responsible now. The, the government won't tell you anymore. But people are not responsible, they are just egoistic, egotistic. So they want their, as you said, they want their money now, they want their freedom now, they want uh, their basic rights now, which is ridiculous because the virus doesn't care at all. And uh, what happened to me? Go back to Noah and the ark. You go back to Noah and the ark. It wasn't going to happen to any of those people with what happened. I always tie Noah and the ark up with Atlantis when Atlantis sunk. <laughs> and you have to look at Lemuria as well. But I'm, I'm digressing too much. I do digress. <laughs> well, <laughs> Yeah, but not, I mean, I, I think that there, there is something in what you're saying, which is relevant to, to Moni's question. Uh, and we do have, I mean, spirituality is another word which we have a lot of trouble with because so many people mean so many different things by it. And um, I, I think what you're, what I hear you calling for in, and relating to whatever is going on with, with um, your Austrian leader, who I know nothing about, is that there are certain there are certain things of the certain things that we think of as spiritual wisdom. Um, I'm not, I'm reminded as I say this, and there'll be a few people in in the the conference who are aware of Cindy Wigglesworth's work on spiritual intelligence which starts basically from the question of, well, what would it mean to be a, a, a spiritually intelligent leader? And there are certain qualities. And when you ask people what those qualities that are, are, they come up with a fairly predictable list, you know, sense of humor, balance, wisdom, care. And then you look at who are the people who embody that. And one of the first people that, who will be picked as an example of a spiritually wise leader will be Mandela and he'll be there with alongside Gandhi and you know whoever yeah. else you can pick you can pick your own but the thing is that sense of the big picture of spiritual wisdom it's more than heart because if you because you have to you have to have you uh, you have to have wisdom and you have to have compassion compassion on its own would would be, feel so sorry for f for the drunk that they would give them a bottle rather than taking them them to an AA meeting. So you have to have that balance of wisdom and compassion, and so that to me is the kind of that's the the practical spirituality that actually matters to me, and it's much more significant in what is next for the world and how we manifest the future that we're looking for, it's much more significant than enlightened consciousness, which is a different thing altogether, but which other people will also call spirituality. I'm interested in that kind of grounded, that grounded combination of wisdom and compassion and the ability to see and care for all the people in the system and for the system itself. The word that's coming up from what you've said to me is one is the wisdom. Wisdom is one of those things. And I don't know if you earn wisdom or it's given to you or it finds you. 
but wisdom is something that I, you, two words you put together, the one was wisdom, and that's all I heard. The other one didn't keep. Compassion? Oh, well, compassion, yes, co wisdom and compassion, but I see you cannot recognize compassion unless you have enough wisdom. Are they hooked together? Are they brother and sister? Yeah, I think we're saying the same thing in different ways. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you actually said the balance, the balance of wisdom and compassion. But uh, uh, what, uh, uh, with regard to the conference, uh, what I would like to mention, we had a virtual meeting of 50 integral people a couple of weekends ago. And the carrot of enlightenment is no longer really interesting for most of them. And that was something new. So maybe they really go into a practical uh, attitude now. Hallelujah. Yeah. We did our part because we women challenged, and she's talking about the German uh, integral community, let's say. We women, she was, Monia in 2006, she, grown, she founded the female consciousness, how was it called in, in uh, field, something like this. In, yeah. In <laughs> yeah, and we were saying we have to get out of this mindset of wanting to be enlightened and wanting to be in the highest stage of something, but become more embodied and become uh, grounded. And I think you did a big job doing that. And then slowly, now you, the more, now, you yeah, do. now I do it on internet. Yeah. And then slowly the community has followed, you know, because it, that has a little bit also to do, in my opinion, between masculine and feminine, no? The masculine is more going up and feminine uh, is more going down to earth. And so I think we women have our task now in this situation of, of the, of the crisis to, to bring a different way of, of being in the world and a different way of seeing the world. And as well, I mentioned that. before, the, the heart space, coming more from the yeah. heart space, being more co-creative instead of knowing everything and just going there, you know, what has been so far the masculine way of, of handling things in the world. While we are experimenting with co-creativity and what we are doing now is also a co-creative talk which in the, yeah. Uh, but there are also some men who have these qualities. Yeah, it's so not I what I say that I said masculine and feminine. Yeah. I didn't yeah. say uh, men yeah. and women, no? Yeah. That we need to, to, to integrate the feminine principles and, and, and find this balance. And I'm glad that I see a, a progress, actually. I don't know how you see that. But. Was that fellow in Austria was he following Steiner in any way? Was he? I, I didn't get it. Was he? Rudolf Steiner? Steiner? Does, does Steiner, he have Rudolf a, Steiner? Uh, maybe, maybe. But there is an, a much older, it's from the Middle Ages, a book that was, uh, well, I don't know the title right now, uh, that gives you instructions on how to handle yourself. And uh, he is, has always been very polite, very soft, uh, slow, sp he never shouts. And uh, yeah, and he is so much hated by so many people. It's amazing. It really is amazing. I mean, they did everything right in this situation and the opposition hates that. And this is just this small change of political thinking. What can you do? But people always will. Hmm? Because when, when you find people like that, hmm. you could look right through the ages. Yeah. They have been killed. They have been put aside. It's, you've got to face that before you start on the journey. <laughs> will I survive? <laughs> Sometimes I think the same with spiral dynamics. A few people like to lynch me as well. <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking uh, about this Claire Grave video, which uh, you sent around. He said, up to a certain point, it's all about polarity and about contrast, you know, and that yeah. we have to come to the point where this 
polarity is uh, dissolving into collaboration, co-creation. And what I see in the moment is an increased um, polarity. It's a, you know, it's like at least that, the, but if you the loud ones are doing it this. To open and close like that, it almost becomes a prayer. And if you do it like this, the wrong way around, uh, we, we can't see your hands, Lorraine. B bring them up. Bring them up higher so that we can see what you're doing. You know the old story: the spider didn't see when the spider climbed up the water spout, and when the water came, it was washed out, and there was all the spiders on the floor. <laughs> so it's. There's always a story. One's got to look very carefully at stories. Don has always been, I thought, magnificent with the stories that he told. It helped me. Maybe I only learned through stories. I think he's that. helped a lot of people that way. I think that's, that's part of the gift he had as a, as a spiral dynamics teacher, um, yeah. was to be the able music. to get the sense of that across to people. I certainly benefited from it. So, I want to say, Heidi, thank you so much for arranging this. I've enjoyed everything. I've enjoyed you and I've enjoyed Monia. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to talk some more with you. And I'd like, to, I'm enjoying John. I'm enjoying your conversation. I, I I would have said I'm sorry because you're so far away because I would love to have you close by that I could just come and say quickly, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? And thank you for inviting me to come this evening. But I promise when we at the conference, I won't go out of bounds. So John will keep me on track and you will keep me on track. Promise? <laughs> yeah, we will do that. It'll be, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It Whatever. Be. It's, yeah. I, I think the conversation it's keeps piece. coming back to where it needs to be. And it's, mm -hmm. it's, been, it's been a pleasure to have this, this conversation today. And I look forward to next week. Yeah. Yes. Is it next week? Next Sunday? No, the Sunday no. after that. Okay. Oh, the 31st. Yeah, uh, 31st, 31st, sorry, okay. The, the I, I 31st, well, something yeah, said the 20th somewhere, so that's why I'm querying it. <laughs> the 31st, yes. that's now set, I'll put it in the diary, yes. and I will, is this set up all right, Heidi? Pardon? Is this set up all right, or do I need, I don't know where you've got your lights, I don't know what you mean. I think she's asking is is where she's sitting is the, what you, what you can see and hear is that working? Yeah, I think so. It, if you had more light in the face would be fine, but it's fine. We can see you, so it's it's okay. Yes. Yeah, yes. at this point I want also to thank you and I stop the recording for for that now and then we stop the recording.